One parting lesson, Shin. Impatience for victory will guarantee defeat. You can't defeat me. Perhaps. I don't have to. this place. Use the force, Luke. Let go. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The Force has a dark and a light side. That's black magic and white magic. The doorway into the occult is an altered state of consciousness. Let the Force take over. That's an altered state of consciousness. Yoda is a yogi. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We'd rather reprove them. Soka means love and light. Welcome to Conspiracy in the Force, Season 3, Star Wars and the New Age Deception. With me, Conspiracy Kyle. Kyle. All things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Welcome back to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. I'm your host, Conspiracy Kyle. On today's show, we will discuss part 7 of Ahsoka, titled Dreams and Madness. In this episode, we saw the Rebels crew reunited and Thrawn working his strategy to escape the galaxy and return to his original galaxy. Now, I don't really think this was a spectacular episode, but there was some good meat to chew on, so let's get into it. Now this scene featured Ahsoka reaching out to Sabine through the Force, which is a story element we've seen several times before in Star Wars. Luke reached out to Leia as he was injured on Cloud City, Vader then called out to Luke as they were escaping from Cloud City, there's a deleted scene of Vader reaching out to Luke at the beginning of Return of the Jedi, and then you have the scenes of Rey and Kylo doing that FaceTime through the Force, which was a little bit weird. But anyways, this is a familiar thing to Star Wars fans. Now speaking of the word familiar, which is used by Sabine in the scene to describe the feeling of Ahsoka's outreach, in The Empire Strikes Back, Luke senses something familiar when he lands on Dagobah, though we can't place what it is. Now the word familiar is commonly associated with the occultic phrase familiar spirit, which Webster's Dictionary describes as a spirit or demon that serves or prompts an individual, or an alternate definition, 
is the spirit of a dead person invoked by a medium to advise or prophesy. Come to think of it, we did see and hear Obi-Wan communicate with Luke after his death, both in a disembodied voice and then in a ghost-like physical appearance. Technically speaking, Sabine probably thinks that she's hearing from the dead as well, since the last time she saw Ahsoka was when she fell, presumably, to her death. The idea of a familiar spirit goes all the way back thousands of years, to the Old Testament. In the book of 1 Samuel 28, when King Saul contacts the Witch of Endor to help him in his military conquests as the Lord had forsaken him, the Witch manifests the spirit of the prophet Samuel, or so it seems. But it's really the Lord using this spirit to tell Saul of his sins and how his battles against the Philistines will ultimately fail. Also in Deuteronomy 18 and Leviticus 19, familiar spirits are mentioned as they are to be avoided by the people of God, along with wizards, necromancers, and others that practice divination. Now, in the real world context, people yearn to reach out into the afterworld and contact those that are long gone. Many people think that contacting their dead relatives through mediums or other means will bring them closure or provide them with information useful for their life's journey. But truthfully, this is all a delusion and an illusion. When a person is dead, they can't be communicated with. Anyone that communicates with someone that they think has passed on is actually in contact with demonic forces, and that's a very, very dangerous thing to do. For me personally, I've talked with a friend in the past about going to a medium, telling him that he shouldn't do it. For one, he will likely not find the answers or information he seeks from this dead relative. And for two, he could be drawn in further to attempt that connection over and over again allowing himself to be opened up to a dangerous world that he doesn't want to be involved in. And like I said, it won't give him the answers he wants anyways. Chasing the dragon. Now let's talk about Satan and his deceptions. One of Satan's biggest tricks is not demon possession and forcing people to act against their will, but by allowing people to choose their own path and persuading them that any path they choose is the right one. As we'll discuss, this ties in very directly with New Age thinking. In the direct context of this episode, here's Thrawn talking about not pursuing Ahsoka and her starfighter directly, but indirectly allowing her to move about freely. We must control all variables. Put her on a path of her own choosing, so that no matter which direction she takes, we'll always be one step ahead of her. Now when it comes to the New Age, the various belief systems that comprise this orbit claim that there are many paths to salvation, or ascendancy. Whether it's Hinduism, Buddhism, or westernized New Age thought, it's believed that each of us can ascend to a higher level of consciousness through our own actions and our own power over our mind. The attaining of knowledge is key, and the only fault you can have is being ignorant in certain areas. However, God doesn't see it this way. While biblical knowledge is important, the most important element in following Christ is having faith in something outside of yourself, not inside of yourself, believing on Him to be the way, the truth, and the life. Now it's made clear in the New Testament that this, in and of itself, it's a narrow path. And I've noticed that it's such a narrow path more and more recently. I made a Twitter post recently about something I mentioned last week on the show, where Dave Filoni's wife had a coffee cup that said, Hail Satan, and a shirt that said, Abortion is Healthcare. Now, as the kids would say, my post was ratioed, aka I did not get the response I intended for the post. I wanted to raise awareness that she, as someone directly influential on a key creator, has some purely wicked ideologies. However, hundreds and hundreds of rabid fans of abortion and Satan ultimately flocked to my page and to tell me how wrong I was, how wrong Christianity was, and to tell me that what she was into was so based. Now, while all this is very disheartening, it's to be expected in the last days. As Paul writes in 2 Timothy 3, verses 1-4, through 4, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, 
without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. But here's my point. These people tell me that the narrow path of Christianity is such a terrible thing. It's bigoted, it's nasty, it's evil. They tell me that there are so many other ways to spiritual enlightenment. There's so many other ways to live their lives outside of these religious pretexts. Their way is better. However, just like Thrawn allowing Ahsoka to follow whatever path she wants, Satan does the same thing by letting people think they can save themselves from hell in a variety of ways. But ultimately, they are deceived and are on a wide path or the broad way that leads to hell. Now, while I sometimes fight back and get angry and puffed up and trying to combat these ideologies, I know ultimately that God needs to work in their lives to turn them away from these delusions. Sharing biblical knowledge sometimes doesn't seem to work, though I'll continue to try in certain situations. However, it's like a good friend told me, it's not always a knowledge issue, it's a heart issue. And that's something that only God can heal and work in. We can only plant seeds and pray. Finally, to piggyback on the verse I read from 2 Timothy, I do believe these are the last days. Now truly we've been in the last days since Christ ascended to heaven. But based on how the world is, I wouldn't be surprised if we're heading for revelation type scenarios soon. Now I'm not going to put any predictions out there about people's places, things, events that are foreshadowing this. Only that people are so incredibly evil and wicked against all the things that are good that I can't see a way out of it. Here's a quote from Thrawn in this episode, talking about the heroes and their ongoing battles taking place, which ties into what I'm talking about here. Let me show you what I see. With our enemy distracted, the cargo transfer is now almost complete, which means we shall soon leave this forsaken place. Nasogatano has lost the one thing she could not afford to lose today. Time. Now, we spend our time so distracted with earthly things and pointless squabbles and disagreements that we often lose sight on the bigger picture. Our time here is short, and we should be using it to the glory and honor of God. And I'll urge anyone listening who has not put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ to consider doing so. Now, I'm not a preacher, so I don't have any clever prayerful words for you to say. But God knows your heart, and if you're truly repentant of your ways and want to live a life in service to Him, he knows this. Repeating a prayer doesn't save you. God knowing the condition of your heart and you allowing him to work within you saves you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. Next week will be the eighth and final episode of Ahsoka Season 1. So tune in for my episode on that. Who knows, maybe I'll do a live show or something I haven't decided yet. We'll see. God bless. God bless.